Hi everyone, welcome to the South Fayette Middle School orientation for sixth grade and new students. We're really happy to have you here today to learn more about South Fayette Middle School for the 21-22 school year. Our administration and administrative assistant teams are, list, are listed here. We have Mrs. Koliakovo, she is our building secretary, and Mrs. Bruce, she is our attendance secretary. So any attendance related questions should go to Mrs. Bruce at either of those email addresses. We have Dr. Maurer, our associate principal, and myself, Erin Cremone, the, the principal. You can follow us both on Twitter. Um, we also have a South Fayette Middle School Twitter page and a South Fayette Middle School Instagram page that we encourage everybody to follow. Our um, counselors, nurse, social worker, and food nutrition uh, services staff are all listed here on this slide. And then again, just our nurse and our food service director and our kitchen leader. The mission statement of the South Fayette Township School District in partnership with the community is to cultivate academic, artistic, and athletic excellence of the whole child by fostering the skills to be confident, ethical, empathetic, and responsible global citizens. We would like to give you an overview of our grade level teams. First, we start with our sixth grade team. And as you can see in the four boxes, we have four different what we call mini teams on the sixth grade level. On our seventh grade team, we also have four grade level mini teams. And on our eighth grade team, we have three mini teams. Our special areas teach various specials courses throughout the day to sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. Listed here on this chart, you can see each one of our special area teachers and the content that they teach. We also have a world languages team in the middle school where students can take Spanish, German, or French. Our learning support team is listed here with sixth, seventh, eighth grade learning support, our life skills teachers, our speech and language therapist, and our ELL or ESL teacher. The sixth grade schedule is as follows. Sixth grade students will enter the middle school and report directly to homeroom. Following homeroom will be blocks one and two. In the middle of block two, actually after the first 10 minutes of block two begins, students will then venture to two specials each day. We have a day A and a day B. So students will have four unique specials that take place. After their second special of each day, they return to their block two, followed by lunch, and then their last block. These are 80 minute blocks. And after their three blocks and two specials and lunch have concluded, the students will report to what we call an activity period. Activity period generally is with their homeroom teacher, but um, the sixth grade has designed different activity period classrooms that the students might be in or assigned to. And finally, dismissal at the end of the day is at 2.52. Our seventh grade schedule is a little different. Students, again, start in their homeroom right as they enter the building. However, instead of going to block one, they will then go out into the building to take part in special one, special two, and then back to the seventh grade hallway for their block one, their block two, which then is followed by lunch. The students actually leave lunch and head back to block two for a little bit of time and then head to their block three, followed by activity period and dismissal. And for eighth grade, unlike the sixth and seventh grade 80 minute blocks, eighth grade actually has four 60 minute blocks. Eighth graders start in homeroom, followed by blocks one, two, and three, each 60 minutes long, then into lunch. And following lunch is their last 60 minute block four, followed by their two specials, activity period and dismissal.
So at the middle school, we have an advisory program. This is a student-centered program, which aims to connect students with each other and to an adult in the building. Every student will be in an advisory group with an adult that they select. Um, we will be having details coming soon about choosing an advisor and the dates and times for advisory will be announced in the coming weeks. Also in the middle school, we believe in the teaming process um, that creates individualized academic environment for all students. Um, it also enables teachers to share best practices for curriculum, instruction, assessment, and to really hone in on individual students. Um, it also, for the students, fosters collaboration and communication. Uh, it broadens friends group, friend groups and social interactions. And then it also offers team meeting times for parents and families. Um, for, for students in middle school, we find it really important for them to be on a team so they can create that identity and have a sense of belonging. Parent drop-off and pickup. Um, in the morning, the drop-off for parents is in front of the building. You'll want to make sure that you pull up to the furthest position along the curb in front of the building, um, nearest to the stop sign by the pool. Please don't drop the, your child off um, in the center at the nearest entrance. This just really backs up traffic um, all the way down the road. And then drop off should occur between 7.35 and 8 a.m. And then for pickup, we are going to do staggered pickup times again this year like we did in the, past, in, in the last year. Um, so at 2.30, 8th grade will be dismissed, 2.40, 7th grade, and 2.50, 6th grade. And siblings will be released with their oldest child. So if you're here for your 6th grader and you also have an 8th grader, your 6th grader will be released at, at 2.30 with the 8th grade um, if they have a sibling in the 8th grade that you're also picking up. Um, you'll need to park in the swim practice, uh, swim in the practice field parking lot and walk to the front of the building for your assigned time. Mask wearing must be followed um, as, as we wait outside to ensure everyone's safety. Um, the masks must be worn when you enter the building. Um, parents are not permitted to park along the curb during this time because we will need to keep those for accessible transportation needs. And then the staff will greet you and coordinate the sound out process for your child. Bus transportation, um, students will mu must wear a mask on the bus at all times. This is a, a federal mandate. Uh, every student will be assigned a bus number and a bus stop for transportation to and from school. And that information actually came out last week. If you have not received your information or you have questions, um, we do have the contact information down here at the bottom of this slide. But the bus drop off is and pickup is at the rear of the building. And then students will report directly to their homeroom, to their lockers, and then directly to their homerooms upon arrival. And then also breakfast is available in the cafeteria when students arrive. Each student this year will be issued their very own locker. Um, which is a, a responsibility. Each locker comes with responsibilities and students will also receive their locker combinations and locations of their locker on the first day of school. Teachers work with the students and will provide plenty of opportunities for the students to practice opening their lockers during their first week, week of school. We also often get questions about students if they're going to be late to class, if they get caught up at their locker, or is there a time built in? And we certainly do have time built in between classes where students can head to their locker, gather belongings, and head back to class. Um, and also even maybe run to the bathroom between classes. So there is time built in. And especially during those first, first weeks of school where your student is still getting used to where the locations are in the building, our teachers are, are lenient with them and understanding um, and, and work with them in those, those few first weeks. To start off our school year, we, um, in, in accordance with the guidance from the Centers for Disease Prevention and the American Academy of Pediatrics, the South Fayette Township School District K-12 requires that all individuals wear a mask when indoors. These will be students and teachers. On the first day of school, students have an exciting opportunity to choose their own lunch seat. We know that this is a big deal for a middle school student and our teachers really do help and assist as well as Dr. Cremone and I uh, and our school counselors will be on hand to help students really find and navigate uh, that lunch seat and where they'll be 
eating lunch uh, this this school year in the beginning of the school year. Um, for safety reasons, seating charts are then created based on the student's seat selection. This happens for the first semester. So we ask students uh, to work together with our staff as we find the best, most comfortable place for lunch. Um, as we know, it's a big part of the school day for our students. So when traveling throughout the middle school building, we ask that students walk on the right side of the hallways and maintain a safe distance from others while traveling through the hallways. We want to still maintain that physical distance as we're walking through the building. Stairwells are like last school year, one direction only, and signage uh, has been posted on those stairwells. So students and staff uh, can will only be using stairwells to go either up to the top floor or up a, a level, or they'll be using those to go downstairs uh, to our bottom floors or, or the cafeteria. And staff will assist in, in helping students navigate properly and safely throughout the building, especially in those first few weeks of school. Power School Student Portal is a great place for you to access your child's grades, attendance, and other information. You will also have email access to your child's teacher through Power School. It's important to note that on Power School, grades are live at all times. So anytime that you check Power School, the grades will be reflected in real time. Um, if you have not already done so, please register online at southfayette.org by clicking on the Power School link under Quick Links at the bottom left of the page. This is very important because this information, including your email addresses, your contact information, also syncs along with other uh, school tools that we use. And that includes Canvas. Canvas is the learning management system for our staff and our students. It is the go-to place for assignments. Um, Canvas is an icon for students to easily access in ClassLink, which is a web page that should open right away as the students log into their laptops. ClassLink is the place to find their, their login to many of the educational tools that we use. Students' courses are, will already be populated in Canvas because they sync again with PowerSchool. Um, they should have access to their teachers, videos, and resources through their cor courses available in Canvas. This is important not only during the school day, but also on days where a student might be absent. The communication tools that we use from the middle school, you will see, it, one is School Messenger. You will see any emails coming from School Messenger uh, is labeled as MS Office as the sender. And these messages are sent, again, using emails registered in PowerSchool. So again, it's very important that you register as a parent um, so that we have those emails on file um, that can be then pulled by School Messenger if we need, when we need to send out important communications from the middle school level. Also, link, links to the weekly announcements will be sent via School Messenger on the last day of each week. These announcements are important because they give information about upcoming events, uh, clubs and activities, ways for students to be more engaged, as, as well as parents, and can also be accessed daily via the website, southfayette.org, under the Middle School tab. You can find a list of clubs and activities found online in our middle school handbook. We really, we, we very uh, much value these clubs and activities, and we feel that they're very important for the middle school experience and for students. Um, sign up announcements will be made by sponsors, again, through those announcement links that I had mentioned earlier. Um, it is important to note, however, that family transportation is necessary um, for students staying after school. These clubs and activities generally take place from 3 o'clock to 4.30. Our school is, is a buzz and is alive with many different activities and clubs that happen. Um, however, at 4.30, um, transportation will need to be provided to students as we no longer have an activity bus. So you're probably wondering how you can get involved with the middle school. Um, one way to get involved is to review the electronic communications that come home that Dr. Mauer just talked about. Um, it uses, like he said, the Power School email address. So again, I know we've said it a few times, but it's really important to make sure that Power School email address is accurate. 
Um, there's also a parent advisory council and we have quarterly meetings. The dates are on the district calendar, but just for your knowledge now, our first meeting date is on October the 13th at 9 a.m. Um, and we'll be sending out more information and reminders about that meeting. And then there's also some student-led conferencing um, that can happen and it will happen in the fall and it can really happen anytime. Anytime you feel that you need a meeting, um, with your child's counselor or your child's team. Uh, they, we always encourage that the middle school students are involved in those, those conferences. And this, we'll have these student-led conferences at any time um, a student or a family wants one. So, and during middle school, it's really important to have some structure and organization both here in the building and then when students leave. Um, so some, some tips for middle schoolers is to develop a set time and place for homework and studying, and that will help your child be prepared and organized. Um, homework can be written assignments, reviewing learned material, or some independent reading. And then Canvas, checking Canvas daily for assignments, videos, daily information, class resources is really the proactive approach to assignment completion. Um, one of the things that I suggest is that you, when you find that space in your home um, where you are going to have your child be studying or doing their homework, that at least once a week you sit down with them and look over the assignments in Canvas. Um, so you're you're aware and so your your child is also aware you know working with 11 to 14 year olds sometimes they're not always completely focused on school um, so this is a good way to, to keep everybody organized And then um, using a planner or agenda or a calendar to track assignments, projects, and assessments is always a great idea. And then planning ahead um, by balancing extracurricular activities with upcoming schoolwork. Um, and then also to use PowerSchool, as Dr. Maurer said, PowerSchool is live uh, is the, a live snapshot of what your child's grades are um, to review their progress, review it weekly with your child, presented as part of the homework routine. And then I always call that the, the reactive check to assignment completion. So we call Canvas proactive. So you know what's coming up, what assignments there are, what tests are coming up, what projects. And then when you check Power School, that's the reactive. So we've been proactive in checking and getting them done. Now we're reacting to see how the this, this student did on those projects, tests, quizzes that they have prepared for. Uh, the student laptops, so the sixth graders will all be getting their laptops on the first day of school. Um, those seventh graders who may be watching this who are uh, our cyber students last year already have their laptops and new students should also be getting their, their laptops on the first day of school. They should remain free from stickers, magnets, etc. cetera. Um, students aren't permitted to download any applications or software to them. And just so they remember that the, the laptop does belong to the school and students should really be, should only be using that device for educational purposes. And then proper care is, uh, of them is essential um, to avoid fees for drops and damage to laptops. And then on the first day of school, students should give their homeroom teacher this assigned loan agreement and the $25 annual fee in the form of a check or money order. And those will be um, handed out on the first day um, of school whenever the student arrives. So one important thing to note about the laptops is just technology in general. Uh, technology practices we have seen work really well for our students and families. First of all, as as your child's parent, it's important to know ch your child's passwords, uh, to have them on hand, to have them handy um, in case you need to log in as them or, or log in um, ever to, to monitor kind of their progress. And per the student and family handbook, one question that we get quite a bit is regarding cell phones. Cell phones are not permitted to be used during the school day as we have found that our school devices really do provide the educational technology that we prefer and that we'd like our students to have access to. So when in the building, students' phones, we ask that they just turn them off and store them in their lockers. Um, they can use uh, school phones throughout the day, especially if they need to um, go through the nurse's office. Our nurse can um, then contact our parents. So all students needing to go home due to illness must go through the nurse's office. 
Another practice that we've seen to be beneficial is uh, considering turning off all screens, just all blue light, all, all technology, kind of finding a time, maybe, maybe it's an hour before bedtime that all screens are turned off. Um, also creating a routine of charging laptops so overnight. It's it's always frustrating when a, when a, for a student whenever they come in and their laptop isn't charged for the day because we do use them quite a bit throughout the school day. Um, so we have found that it's always best when you create a routine of where the laptop's being charged in a common area, maybe the kitchen, the living room, instead of a student room. School water fountains this year are only going to be able to be used to fill up reusable water bottles. Um, students are permitted to bring a water bottle to school. We do ask, however, that the water bottle is labeled with first and last name on it. It's much easier when we find those missing bottles uh, to find who it belongs to. We also prefer the transparent bottles are used within the school. And also we ask that water bottles are not shared between uh, students. In regards to attendance, parents and guardians should provide a written note as an excuse if a student is absent from school. This is very important. Any absence due to quarantining or COVID-19 related symptoms or a COVID diagnosis will be marked as excused. Written documentation, however, will still need to be um, given to the school uh, by a parent, guardian, or a physician. And when in doubt, if you have any questions, please communicate with our administrative assistant, Mrs. Bruce. Um, we will work it out. We will sort out everything uh, for you and your family, for your child, your student. Um, we we want to make sure that, um, we, however, that we do have documentation regarding absences that occur throughout the school year. So um, when you're trying to figure out whether or not to send your child to school, um, we're really hoping that everybody will please participate in these daily self-screening procedures. Um, so we ask that uh, if the answer to any of the questions below is yes, um, that you stay home and then consult a healthcare provider. So there are a list of eight questions here um, that you would want to ask yourself every day um, before sending or ask about your child every day before sending your child to school. Um, these communication, this communication will also be available on the website so you can have a, 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 a handy for you whenever you need to ask those questions every morning. So in middle school, um, definitely changing students. Students uh, have uh, one study showed that the, between the ages of 11 and 14, students have the most physical, emotional, emotional and mental growth um, at more as much as they do between the ages of zero and three. So this is a big time. This is a big changing, uh, changing years for students. So friendships often change during middle school. Um, you can help your child identify his or her passions or interests. And those you may see change from the time that they're entering as an 11-year-old and when they're exiting as a 14-year-old, um, you right, might see those changes. Um, encourage participation in various clubs, sports, arts, music, activities, so your child can identify their passions. Um, and then we really encourage participation in school-sponsored activities. Um, they can really be a great way to broaden peer relationships and provide a support network through those middle years. Uh, research shows that students are more likely to succeed when they feel connected to their school. And it also shows that young people who feel connected to school are less likely to engage in risky behaviors. And that increased connection to school promotes motivation, engagement, emotional well-being, and academic performance. So we are here for you as a school um, to help you and your family and your child figure out uh, their passions and their interests so they can keep that connection to school. And then responsibility is a big piece of middle school as well. Students learn uh, to take responsibility for their actions. Um, and then there are, there are also consequences um, only when they, and when they take accountability. It's also uh, best as parents, I know sometimes it's hard, but it's best to avoid making excuses for our children or trying to fix their problems because um, that takes that accountability piece out of their, their development and out of their learning. And then some of life's greatest lessons come from making mistakes and facing adversity. And then just some final thoughts um, on the first day of school, which is August 25th. 
we're going to be having our Happy New Year celebration. So it's a happy new school year. Uh, and we're going to start it with positivity and communication um, because those are really the keys to success. Um, and we really want to foster those school, family, and community partnerships. So would, if you would please consider providing feedback about the orientation, um, you can access the Google form through the QR code. Uh, you can, if you're watching this video, you can press pause and take out your smartphone and access the QR code that way. Um, and we really appreciate your feedback as we're constantly hoping to improve. Um, your feedback is vital to that process. So thank you for taking the time and we're looking forward to a fabulous school year.